This video is sponsored by AG1. The Buddha Castle, exquisite architecture, incredible panorama, billions of embezzled EU funds, Hungarian Vladimir Putin, annual neo-Nazi gatherings. But this epicenter of Hungarian culture boasts something else not often talked about. Public transportation. What kind of public transportation? Midi buses. From the mid 1990s, the Budapest Transit Company launched the so called Castle Bus Service with the aforementioned midi buses, which are a third shorter than normal solo buses for better maneuverability inside the castle area and its tight curves. They were the Icarus Model 405. Brand new, domestically made, contemporary, and massive pieces of shit. The buses had more issues than a Bethesda game on release day. They had problems with the engines, the axles, the frame, nearly every major component had some fatal issue waiting to come out. They would constantly break down, sometimes catch fire, and make passengers nauseous due to their drive characteristics. After years of constant factory recalls and futile attempts to fix them, the transit company finally announced a tender for new minibuses. Which failed, so the 405 series remained. After years of desperate servicing and even more desperate overhaul attempts, which for a lot of money made the buses slightly less shit, the Budapest Transportation Company finally received brand new minibuses. Turkish Karsanatak diesel and Hungarian Modulo Medio electric buses. However, there's a problem. Many problems, in fact. The Turkish midi buses have a habit of smoking. I mean, really smoking. Or just spontaneously combusting while idle. That's because going up on steep gradients all day is not something their diesel engine can reliably do. Okay, so how about those battery buses? The future of green transportation. Ready to solve the castle bus issue once and for all. Well, they are such shit that as of this year, 6 out of the original 20 are already scrapped. 7 years after entering operation. Otherwise, the remaining 14 are set to produce 5 to 6 breakdowns per day. Their design is terrible. Their frames are cracking, they don't tolerate humidity or cold weather, and they smoke during winter. Turns out the heating on these electric buses is operated by a gasoline-fired furnace in the back. Oh, and uh, one of them also caught fire while charging. The Castle Bus has been a non-stop, two-decade disaster show for Budapest. Why can't they run normal, actually working rolling stock up that damn hill? Well, they wanted to. Decades ago there were plans to lead wires up the hill and run trolley buses up and down the castle. The electric traction motor is much more reliable and can handle steep gradients far better than a combustion engine. However, thanks to the influential bus lobby, the lines were never put up and Budapest got stuck with its current midi buses. Without such a meaningful change, the Kessel bus is and will remain shit. Not even shiny new battery buses could solve the problem, because aside from all the construction issues, turns out slapping a big ass battery on a bus that has to go up and down the hill constantly isn't the smartest thing to do. Also, they were horribly expensive, about twice the cost of a regular, large solo bus. Why have I told you all this? I wish I knew. Just kidding, I told you all this to illustrate how fundamentally broken systems cannot be fixed either by making its parts slightly better or by slapping batteries into it and calling it a day. And the situation is the same with electric cars. Only with them, things are much worse. How is that possible? Let me explain. Now, electric cars are green, or so they say, and so, did you know what's also green? Uh, okay, so today's video is sponsored by AG1 and it's green, and this was my attempt at a seamless transition. Our returning sponsor, AG1, is a whole food dietary supplement for everyday use, containing 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients. AG1 is gluten and dairy free, low calorie, vegan, and it's one of the most comprehensive supplements on the market, made with the highest quality ingredients. Preparing it takes just a few seconds. Put a spoonful into a glass of water and mix. Done. AG1 tastes a bit different to everyone, but nonetheless good. The taste is mild and the texture is pleasant. It supports your immune system, maintains your energy level, and boosts your body's natural recovery process. It's especially useful for those doing heavy physical work or training. I also drink AG1 every morning, and I feel better and more energetic since then. Go to athleticgreens.com slash adamsomething to get started on your order. AG1 is going to give my community a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs for free with your first purchase. Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. So, electric cars and why they are a terrible solution to our traffic and pollution problems. I should make it clear though that electric cars are still slightly better than gasoline cars. Slightly. So why won't electric cars solve anything and how could they make things actually worse? Electric cars are powered by gigantic batteries, and they're all fun and games until it gets cold. Then many owners find that their range can have even on a full charge, similarly when the weather gets too hot. Electric car batteries are at their peak performance at 21 degrees Celsius. Anything above or below that will result in performance loss. But a far bigger problem is battery degradation. For example, the Tesla Model S has an annual degradation rate of 2.3% according to this GeoTab article. So at around year 4 of ownership, you are already down to 90%. 
10%. And this is a big issue in terms of the car's reusability and the second-hand market. If you buy a 10-year-old used electric car, now you have to pay for both the car and the new battery, which costs thousands, potentially tens of thousands of dollars extra. Not to mention, who will process the millions of discarded batteries each year should EVs get popular enough? But an even bigger problem is… FIRE! Electric car batteries are technically safe unless you keep them in suboptimal conditions, meaning when you use them in areas where the temperature isn't 21 degrees Celsius and the roads aren't perfectly smooth, which tends to happen around the globe. If you run an EV in, say, hot climates, on bumpy roads that shake the battery around for years, there is a higher chance it will spontaneously combust. This can already be observed with electric buses. There have been numerous large fires around the world where bus batteries just randomly caught fire. That's because buses are intensively used, often on imperfect road surfaces. But some cars are also very intensively used, also on imperfect road surfaces. So once EVs get widespread enough and get enough years of operation in, many EVs will just become ticking time bombs. And lord help you if one of them goes off in a tunnel during a traffic jam or something. Extinguishing EVs is borderline impossible. A combustion car fire on average takes 1100 liters to put out. In contrast, a Tesla takes between 11 and 30,000 liters, 10 to 26 times more. Our fire departments do not have the capacity to put out such fires. Imagine if there's a 20 car pile up on the highway and 8 EVs catch fire. Aside from the fact that everyone unable to get out will be vaporized within minutes, in the best case scenario you would need something like 88,000 liters of water, meaning each burning electric car would need one full water tender to put out at minimum. So the more likely scenario is that firefighters will just let the cars burn out, which means the road surface below them will be completely destroyed and will need closures and repaving after each fire. Speaking of roads… We've all seen this boomer meme about Roman roads versus today's roads. Roman roads have stayed perfectly intact for millennia, yet our new asphalt roads are full of potholes after a year. Thanks, engineers. Ah yes, the Roman roads, famous for having withstood the intense Roman truck traffic. The reason why our roads fall apart quickly isn't engineers, it's vehicle traffic. Increasing the weight of a vehicle leads to exponential road wear. So to cause as much road damage as one Toyota Prius, you would need 5,633 fat men on freakishly heavy bicycles to bike through a road section. And and you would need 35,612 to cause the same damage as a Hummer does, and that's the equivalent of 63 Priuses. And to get the road damage caused by a 9-ton big rig, you would need 6.8 million fat men on freakish levy bicycles biking through a given road section. Now a Tesla Model S's weight is actually comparable to the Chevy Tahoe, causing road wear equivalent to 59,575 fat men on freakish levy bicycles. All this is to say, get ready for a tax increase. Once EVs get popular enough, road damage caused by cars will at least double. And you'll be paying for the repairs. More road damage will of course lead to bumpier roads, which will give a good shake to all those batteries, so we might even see more fires because of that. But the biggest, most fundamental, unchangeable problem with electric cars, the reason why they won't solve our problems, is… When it comes to space use, cars are inherently inefficient and unsustainable, especially if used by everyone en masse. For example, a six-lane highway might let through around 112,000 vehicles per day. That's the daily output of the Golden Gate Bridge. 112,000 vehicles, with an average US occupancy of 1.5 passengers, is 168,000 people. A six-lane highway for 168,000 people with all its associated infrastructure. Asphalt concrete surface, traffic barriers, lighting, ramps, noise barriers, overpasses, underpasses, wildlife bridges, signage, policing, accident response, roadworks, quality checks, landscaping, cleaning, all these expenses to carry a third of the people in a day that the Budapest M3 metro line carries. Or, as a more American example, the 26-lane KT Freeway carries 300,000 people every day, while the Bay Area Rapid Transit carries 400,000. So this two-track urban rail actually beats this monstrosity in terms of capacity, not to mention the costs, which, if you're an American taxpayer, you footed the bill for this highway. Large-scale car infrastructure is a fundamentally broken system, which we're now trying to fix by slapping batteries into cars and calling it a day. But electric cars will not solve this issue. They will not solve the inherent inefficiency and horrible economy of cars and roads. If anything, they will actually make it worse by causing way more road damage and making accident response an absolute nightmare with all the associated additional costs. So what's the solution? A public transit that provides a practical, convenient alternative to driving, and in cities, actually useful, safe bike infrastructure to give people the freedom to not have to own a car to get around. Of course, this solution mostly applies to urban areas. In the countryside, cars will always be necessary. But the vast majority of people do not live in the countryside anyway, so so it's fine. 
this infatuation with battery electric vehicles will not solve anything. It's just a way to greenwash our problems and for our politicians to pretend they're doing something for the environment when in fact they aren't. So that's the reason why as soon as battery cars, battery buses and battery trains became a thing, those politicians who did not give a single shit about public transit before suddenly started obsessing over them. That's because they still oppose investment into public transit, so instead of electrifying rail lines or putting up trolleybus wires, they can just go, oh yeah, just put some battery vehicles on the lines, there we go, environment saved, now we can go back to not giving a fuck about public transit for the next 20 years. In the end, Budapest started considering running autonomous trolleybuses in the castle instead of the accursed minibuses. These are so-called autonomous trolleybuses with small batteries inside that can move the bus for a few kilometers and then can be recharged from the regular contact network. This is a good compromise between the reliability and efficiency of trolleybuses and the flexibility of battery buses, minus all the enormous fire risks and road damage. Though in the end, if trolleybuses in the castle work out, eventually they will put up proper trolleybus wires above the route, solving the castle bus issue once and for all with a practical, economical and sustainable mode of transit.